Who is a PBR Iron Cowboy? Iron Cowboy Champion. He is rugged, tough, resilient, determined. The Iron Cowboy has defied the odds of human limitation. Ever so close. Putting his body and existence in peril. All for eight seconds of $100,000, a ticket to the PBR World Finals, a shot at a world title. He is a pretender that became a contender. He is over $350,000 richer. He is making his son proud, despite what Father Time may say. He is a living legend. Moody is your Iron Cowboy. The Iron Cowboy is one final chapter of a proud career. Infamous title. Or the beginning of another. PBR World Champion. This year's PBR Iron Cowboy guarantee himself a ticket at the World Championship table. And if he plays his cards right, the Iron Cowboy may just become a PBR World Champion Cowboy. A decade ago, Jerry Jones built a cathedral for his beloved Dallas Cowboys. Now, for the ninth time, his house provides the PBR's Cowboys and Bulls an epic stage on which to shine. Two-time PBR world champ J.B. Mooney seems to have found his groove. This is one of bull riding's biggest venues, so of course he would. Pearl Harbor has had to play second fiddle the past two seasons. And he feels now is his time. He'll have a major say who is today's Iron Cowboy. 2018 second majors upon us, a record setting crowd. Over 46,000 people in AT&T Stadium. You mix that crowd with the pressure and the points at stake, and these guys are going to have to be good. You look at the world standings. Denner Barbosa, our world number one, not here. He is out after being eliminated in round number one. That means there's plenty of room for those world standings to change. We bring you up to our best skybox of the season, alongside two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride and nine-time world champion Ty Murray. I am Craig Hummer. Ty, guess what? Eduardo Aparecido, last year's Iron Cowboy, is still in the mix. He's got a chance to defend. Well, and he's looking good. And looking down through this list of bulls, this is where the men are going to get separated from the boys. You're looking at the at the rankest bulls in the world right now. And Eduardo Aparecido is a guy that's not only the, the defending champ, but I think he looked at one of the best guys in the first round. He's got seven dust. Now, this is a really strong bull, but remember, they're all going to be really strong. Going to be right into his hand, I'm giving Eduardo a great chance. Strong in terms of describing riders. Well, guess what? You've been talking about him all weekend long. JB Mooney is here as well. Yeah, and it's no secret the two time champ of the world, JB Mooney, did not get off to the start he wanted to in 2018. He's coming back from a major shoulder surgery, a torn groin at the beginning of the season, and now the naysayers have started coming out. Can he return back to his old form to that world champion? Form. Well, here's what everybody needs to know about J.B. Mooney. When the stage is the biggest, the lights are the brightest, and when he feels like his back is against the wall, that's when this guy rises to the occasion. I look for him to do it. So he's your pick to win. Absolutely. You heard it here first. Well, being a major, that means we have our whole crew with us, and there they are in nice little tiny boxes. Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, J.W. Hart. Leah, I'm going to first go to you. You've got Cody Teal who faces a big mamma jamma, Pearl Harbor. He does it there. He comes into this round with the powerhouse bull. Last year he won the regular season bull of the year. This is a bull that gets stronger about midway through. How can you show him off best? Absolutely, he does. You know, it's just a bull that you got to go at him the whole time. You can't get lazy. you got to keep riding him through and ride for 10 to get him road. So just going to go at him. What are you most looking forward to? Oh, uh, you know, every time you get a chance to get on a bull like that, it's a big opportunity for a big score. So all you got to do is go out there and do your job, and you know he's going to do his. Good luck. Thank you. For more on the bulls that are going to be seen, let's check in with Shorty Gorm and the Matador Jerky pick of the pen. Well, yeah, I'm going to go with the bull, Coach Cheese. This is a really good bull. He's a really long bull. What I mean by that, the first two jumps, he's going to be way out in the middle of the arena. 
Colton Jesse's got this bull. He did a really good job of staying out over the front end of his bull in round number two. He's going to have to do the same thing on Coach East because he's big, long, and strong. Once you get around the corner, if you get around the corner, this bull gets really cool. Going to blow in the air, kick. Be a lot of points on that on this bull. JW, this pin stacked up. What do you think? Well, let's just face it. To this point, the bulls have not been nothing short of outstanding. And I'm going to tell you what, one important thing today, these bulls are stacked up through these alleyways. It may be the 12 rankest bulls I've seen established in maybe the, back, the past 10 years. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be honest with you and bet, bet good money that there's a handful of bulls in this pen that money cannot buy, guys. Strong words from our stock contractor on our team. We're going to start this round number two with Colton Jesse going up against a good one, Coach Cheese. But to JW's point, they are all good, if not great. We're going to finish it off with Cody Teal aboard Pearl Harbor. But gang, let's first talk about Colton Jesse. Mackey rode Oscar P, which was a very difficult bull. It had only been ridden one time in his career in round number one. Coach Cheese, a step up, though. Definitely a step up. You heard JW, and this was Shorty's pick. Here's the thing, though. You know, this guy did an interview with Leah after his round one uh, ride, and he wasn't rattled. He wasn't over the top about it. It was just like another day at the office. And I think that's going to come in big time here in this matchup because if you just start looking at all the great bulls that are going to be out, the venue that you're riding in, it'd be pretty easy, Ty, to get wrapped up in all that and forget about the most important thing, and that's riding bulls. Yeah, and you know, the thing that stuck out the most to me about Colton in the first round was how well he countered the jump, and that's the thing that has to happen on these, on these really strong, really ranked bulls. They all have really explosive power going out away from a guy, and if you're not getting up off your butt and you're not moving forward when they do, they're gonna make you pay for it. Remind everyone of this format, you must ride to advance. We will have a maximum of five rounds. If all the riders in a round buck off, they all come back for the next round. But we can't imagine that would happen with the likes of J.B. Mooney, Eduardo Aparecido, and others in this round number two. Jesse against Cochise, if there's a silver lining at all, this bull has been ridden two times already this season. This bull, he is susceptible to left-handed guys. You know, I've seen Stetson Warren make one really good ride and start another one on it. Oh, yeah. Colton Jesse gets the eight. They're going to take another look as he hobbles away. But to your point, Justin McBride, Cochise made an error. He started to go right and switched back into Jesse's hand. Yeah, and that's the book on Coach East. All the guys know it. You know, he's gonna, these are the tracks he's in every time. If you can make it to this point right here, but I just love this guy's demeanor. Like, the moment is not too big for him being in this venue. He was not scared of this bull one bit. Just like in round one, when you highlighted the loose riding he would need. And of course, there he gets a little too loose. Oh boy. It looks as though he's going to come up short based on this judge's review. Yeah, you're going to see the slap. And if the clock is at the right place, like it looks to be, you're going to see the contact with that free hand right there on that shoulder. Boy, this is too bad. But I'll tell you, you know, we talk about these majors being a place that you can make a statement. I feel like young Colton Jesse has made a statement. This, this, this kid's a real talent that's, that's doing the things you've got to do. He's staying relaxed, countering the jump. We might see some big things from this young man. We've had a switch in the order. Joao Ricardo Vieta is going to go next. And he was paired up in this round with a bull by the name of Heartbreak Kid. We've seen this bull out three times this season, Mac. In fact, in this bull's career, he's never been ridden. Yeah, and, and I haven't seen anybody close to having an answer for him. This bull, you never know what he's going to do. He's going to have a lot of up and down, some forward, turn back either direction. I think he's one of those smart type of bulls we talk about that really goes off of field. He looks like a handful. Yeah, and can be kind of a dangerous bull too. Want to jerk a guy down and maybe, maybe meet heads. We 
Saw this bull in Anaheim in the championship round. Took care of Fabiano Vieta. 2.55 seconds. Also bucked off our world number one, Denner Barbosa. Kaiki Pacheco. A long list. Doesn't happen very often, Matt, but when a bull goes into Joao Ricardo Vieta's hand, we often feel you can book that eight seconds like clockwork, but it did not happen today. And, and he's gonna have to hope that everybody bucks off now so he gets another chance. But I feel like Joao let this one get away. Heartbreak Kid had a, the most rideable day that I've ever seen him have, and I don't wanna take anything away from him because he was still really good but it was a good day for Joe Al to get the job done on him. Yeah, we're grading bulls here on a curve, definitely. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're talking about uh, this is the cream of the crop. This They don't get any ranker than the ones we're seeing right now. Well, Ty, this was your pick right here. Eduardo Aparecido, seven dust. Seven dust at times has been a lot like Cochise, Ty, in terms of looks unrideable. But at other times, you see guys seem to figure out what is his Rubik's Cube of a pattern. You know, he'll go either direction. He, he likes the right. Now, Eduardo's a guy that I know Justin's a fan of. I'm a fan of. You know, he's the defending champion. And, and, and this gives you a taste of what he can do to the right. Well, Catfish John has become a bull map that riders not only relish the chance to get on, but has led them to, just like that big check, the pay window. Seven dust, not so much. Well, and a lot of times, as Ty talked about, the bull will go either direction, but he likes the ride, just like Catfish John, but the difference is, seven dust is gonna have a lot of forward movement. He is gonna be taking jumps really long and forward, that wants your upper body back, and then Shorty Gore, this bull can play some mind games with you, because he's pretty darn mean on top of it. He can, you know, they ought to change his bull's name the psychological warfare because that's exactly what he does he's big he's strong he's scary because this bull is mean and he's big enough to hurt you he means business after you get off this bull it's going to be game on in this big arena we don't have our normal outgate close we can't get him pointed we're going to have to work on this one guys yeah to go back to the comparison between catfish john and seven dust guys catfish john is like being in a rolls royce on the autobahn seven dust is like being in a stagecoach on an 1830s road, Ty. Yeah, with square wheels. <laughs> Not the same out. Aparecido, as we've shown and told you, the defending Iron Cowboy. And that chance to defend Took a hit right there. Seven dust causes the touch just yeah. under six. You know, okay, so here's a bull that has everything going, you, you know, as far as hard ride, he has everything going for him. He's strong, he's athletic, he takes big, strong jumps, but then he changes the rhythm. Okay, so that's all front end. Eduardo's doing everything he needs to be doing. Even here you see him opening up with that outside leg. This bull's bucking hard, and, they, and Eduardo has an answer for all of it. Now watch the change up right here. He's going to change the rhythm and shoot forward. Look at the amount of jerk. This arm is straight. It's almost whipping his head back around the wrong way. I mean, that that is taking a lot of pressure on that arm and just whipping him out over that shoulder. That one there is a treacherous one to get by. Once again, the bullfighter is such a great job to collapse in making sure a Parasito is safe. We've moved on to Weberson Duarte, and he gets to sit atop a bull Mac that has helped a lot of guys earn points, Jack Shot. Yeah, round to the right, gonna have some forward to him, and the thing about Jack Shot, he's tougher at eight than he is at three seconds. This is a bull that just keeps bringing it. This is a tall task away from his hand to the right. This is a bull that Kaiki Pacheco has danced with on numerous occasions. Let's see what Weberson can get done. Jack Shot ends that with an emphatic motion, and Duarte's done. See that bull kind of just walks out of there. That's something that can mess up your rhythm like that too. You don't know when that jerk's coming. You see him get off balance, he kind of reaches in front of him. 
And when you're on one that's bucking that hard and that fast, when you lose that balance just for that split second, boy, it throws everything out of whack. This is what you expect in round number two of Iron Cowboy. The Bulls having their way. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Las Vegas. Explore now at visitlasvegas.com. B&W Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. And by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your favorite teams. Watch highlights, get breaking news, scores, and more. Download the CBS Sports app today. The format of Iron Cowboy, very simple. We started with 40 riders in round number one, only 12 advanced to round two. As we've said, you must ride to move on. Our minimum, well, we're there, two rounds. We'll have a maximum of five rounds, but it's really the points, Justin McBride, that are the most important because the winner gets at least 625, and there's a huge gap to number two. Yeah, a lot of points. This is my favorite format all season long of the regular season because it's the easiest for me to understand, <laughs> first and foremost. But you talk about those points in a world championship race, they can, they can extend a lead, but they can put you in the mix also. We've seen that already. If you watched our CBS Sports Network show last night, we showed you what a win can do in terms of moving you up those world rankings. Alex Marsilio came into the weekend 42nd in the world, but tied in round number one. He rode like a top 10 rider. Yeah, he looks good, and this is a bull that kept trying to jump out away from him. He was having nothing of it. You know, this is another guy that looked really good in round one, and I think he's got the, I think he's got, one of the nicer bulls in this round, and, and that, that doesn't mean he's nice, but like I said, we're kind of grading on a curve here. This bull's gonna be around to the left. You'll see this bull kind of sling his head to get some momentum. This might be a sleeper. Yeah, this is a really cool bull J.W. Hart brought, and I know J.W. is proud of him, it should be. This is a really good bull. So yes, lock would be as high as 90 plus on it. could very well turn into Marsilio's moment to shine. Night sweats, eight seconds, our first qualified ride. Now Alex can only wish and hope that everyone else bucks off, and we've got our winner out of round number two. 88 and three quarters. Well, I thought this bull bucked, and, and this is just a great ride, and he's not always exactly where he wanted to be, but look how he keeps readjusting his feet. He keeps making that big move with his body, getting it where it needs to be. That was a good bull ride. That was awesome, man. And you know, Craig, you brought up the point of hoping everybody else bucks off. With the rest of the bulls that are left, there's a real chance of that happening. <laughs> Next up, Ramon DeLima. He's going to try his hand against After Midnight, and 
you mention the Bulls. Well, as he preps, let's send it down to Liam. I've got Paolo Krimber helping me to interpret here, but Alex, what was your goal coming into today's event? Qual foi a sua a sua mentalidade de hoje vindo para esse evento? O que você veio pensando em fazer? Eu vim vim tentar fazer o do meu melhor. Esse evento a gente tem que dar o melhor porque é um evento muito bom. E graças a Deus está dando certo, estou muito feliz. Não cai nem a ficha ainda de estar fazendo um bom trabalho aqui. Uh, it's a great event. I came determined to win. And I didn't realize how good I have done so far, but I know I did good. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty easy though, isn't it, guys, to know how well you've done when you're the only guy to make eight seconds. Back to your point of keeping it pretty simple, Mac. That's a pretty easy format to follow. Yeah, and when you get in that zone, you're not worried about anything else other than riding your bull. Great job for Alex. Ramon DeLima is going to have to be the first man to ever ride after midnight. 13-0 in his career at this level. 16-0 overall. After midnight, should have kept riding until the clock turned 12 because DeLima just too strong, Ty. This is looking great. You know, this is what you want when you're seeing an Iron Cowboy. You're wanting to see the guys ride the Rankus Bulls. I think this bull tried to turn back way too close right there, got kind of tangled up in the chute. You could even see him kick it at one point. I don't feel like we were able to see the, the, the amount of power and strength that we usually see from this bull because he was just simply too close to the buck and shoots. That being said, he still bucked and he still bucked hard and Ramon uh, made a great ride. That qualified ride means we will definitely have a round three. It is now J.B. Mooney's turn. He has been paired up in this round with another one from Hart Cattle Company, Canadian Mist. This bull Canadian miss gonna have two big ones out of there and around to the left and you know J JB Mooney, he, he likes it. You'll watch him as this that bull leads out of there. You'll watch him place those hips over to the right side of the bull. That's kind of a a uh, signature move of JB's. He likes to get away from that hand a little bit. He feels like he can catch up when he needs to. He doesn't like to be sitting over there into his hand. And, uh, you know, again, as, as Justin has talked about over and over with this guy, you get him at AT&T Stadium with 50,000 people cheering their uh, faces off for him, that's when he steps up. He doesn't feel pressure in a negative way that way. really puts him on the positive. Yeah, and he's going to have to because this is another bull from JW. But nothing like the first one we've seen in Night Sweats with good timing, good kick and spin. This one is really mean. He can get back in the shoes. You never know what he's going to do. He can be long and around his left, or he can go on a couple. Canadian Mist ends the Texas afternoon for J.B. Mooney. Two seconds, and then the Bull wants to play a little longer. Yeah, he, Canadian Mist, I'm telling you, he is mean, and he's still out there with James DeBoard and T.J. Roberts, the safety men, but watch him bring J.B. over his shoulder right here. Mooney commits, makes a big move, and there's nothing there but the fence. And the exit. J-Dub, you've got to be proud of that little bull. I tell you what, Ty, you, you guys are saying they're my bulls. This guy belongs to uh, TNT Bucking Bulls, and partnerships with them means a lot to me and my family. And they've brought some really good ones on board with us, and it's sure fun when you can, when you can throw the champ off like that. So JB becomes a spectator for the rest of this Iron Cowboy. We know Alex Marsilio and Ramon DeLima will head to round number three. Who's going to join him?
next Global Cup happening in June in Australia. The coaches have been named and the top three members of the team or at least the automatic selections based on last season's results are there. Troy Dunn, the new coach of Australia. Lachlan Richardson, Aaron Clyer, and Troy Wilkinson will be there joining him for sure. Aaron Roy coaching Canada once again. Dakota Butter, Jordan Hansen, and Brock Radford are all back. Gerardo Venegas, a new coach for Team Mexico, but we know those names, Edgar Durazzo, Francisco Morales, and Juan Carlos Contreras. We've seen all of them on tour this season. A new coach for Brazil as well, the hard-nosed and seriously-minded Renato Nunes, Eduardo Aparecido, Kaiki Pacheco, and Jose Vitor Leme already on the team. And our man in the booth, and really the man of so many talents, Justin McBride, Captain America back to lead the red, white, and blue. Jess Lockwood, Derek Kobob, and Cooper Davis already there. The rest of the teams will be made up by coaches' selections on those five illustrious country coaches. That will be the Global Cup in June. We still have an Iron Cowboy champion to decide, and next up, Ty, it's Valderon de Oliveira. He faces Speed Demon. Yeah, this is Bull that's going to be around to the left and, and, and super fast. You know, going back to the Global Cup, for Justin McBride and Cody Lambert both to tell me that it was the most exciting bull riding they ever saw in the first one really says a lot about this new concept that the PBR is doing. I'm looking forward to seeing this next one. Well, and Mac, and one of the things you talked about on the pre-show of the CBS Sports Network telecast last night was the fact that the addition of some of these new coaches, specifically Australian Troy Dunn, who is such a legend and, and part of the founding of the PBR as well so many years ago, it's going to be great to have him in the mix. Absolutely. You know, I said it. Not only is he the best bull rider Ty, that's ever come out of Australia ever, but he's one of the very best of all time. You can put him up there with Jim Sharp, Tuff Eadman, whoever you want to talk about. So I think that gives you, you want to do well when that guy's on the back of your shoot. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I just, I love seeing the team concept. I love seeing coaches being there. I love seeing some help and getting some placement that way. We're going back to 2010. This is how Valderon de Oliveira won the first ever Iron Cowboy tie. It was a great ride on Bones. Yeah, this Bones, it, kind of an off day for Bones, but that was all that Valderon needed. And to still be riding here uh, is, is something else. This is a guy that has some serious longevity. Well, we've talked a lot, Mac, haven't we, over these first two months of 2018 about Valderon's story. He had that perfect start and then a near-perfect start, and he sort of righted the ship a little bit after being bumped around in Kansas City, had that concussion and injury, therefore he couldn't make the championship round. But we showed you the graphic a moment ago, 416 career qualified rides. 30 year, 38 years old, still getting it done at this level. Pretty unheard of. You know, the guy is amazing. He has got a tall bull in front of him with Speed Demon. Ty talked about the bull likes to be right here to the left. If he does that trip, I don't give Hyderon much of a chance. One of the times I've seen Eduardo ride this bull, he was around to the right. If the bull will do that, Valeron's got a chance, but it's all got to start to shoot because this bull is no day off in there. Well, you're right. This is certainly a clash of styles as well, isn't it, Ty? This bull has so much speed, and Valeron usually doesn't handle that. Well, you know, 38 years old, that's the equivalent of a running back in the NFL being 38 years old. You know, I would really say they're really similar. You start getting into 30, 31, 32 years old, you're an old man in this game, and I think that seeing this guy compete still at a pretty high level at 38, that, that, that puts him in the freak category. Hey, Shorty, I asked you this type of question, I know, in many forms, but with a gentleman of Valderon's age against the bull that is known to be so fast, do you guys try to come up with a plan at all? No, you know, you can't plan it on a bull like this. Uh, this is a little bull. He's pretty mean and he's fast. Uh, Valderon, he's 38 years old, but he's a young man. Craig, I'm going to go ahead and give you that because uh, I'm just about a year older than him. So I'm going to tell you, he's a young man. But no, I, Jesse and I just talked about it just a minute ago. He said, Valderon's probably going to be a little slow getting up. This bull's fast, and he will try to get you. He's got an attitude. So it's going to be game on. But I'm, I'm agreeing with these guys. It's all going to start in the shoot. Uh, I can tell you this, though. Valderon's lucky I'm not judging because I would have put him on a clock a long time ago. That bull kind of messed around in there. 
stood up, gave him a great chance. He was adjusting the shafts and his road. I just don't think that's right. I think you need to get out of there when the chance is coming. Valderon and Speed Demon about to dance. Speed Demon ends it the way he usually does, very quickly. Fast and forward, not a good combination for Valderon. Yeah, and you'll, you'll watch how this bull takes over the control of his free arm. Watch right as this bull turns back and comes around in this kick. Watch Valderon's free arm swing back around behind him. Roll it for, forward a little bit more. See how it just keeps going? Look, it's clear on the other side of this bull's hip. That's going to rotate these shoulders, which rotates these hips. You can already tell all of the weights on this leg, and this bull's coming this direction. Speed Demon does his job. And he gets the handoff now to his stablemate, Spotted Demon. Dakota Butter is going to try to make the eight seconds, but it's been a little bit of a rough start to round two for him, Leah. He was slotted to ride second in this uh, event, but he realized that he didn't have his riding glove, his helmet, or his mouth guard. Couldn't find it, so he scrambled and finally just borrowed Colton Jesse's helmet and he has a backup riding glove that was in his bag. And as far as the mouthpiece, I have no information on whether or not he borrowed one or he's just riding without. <laughs> okay, I mean, I guess they all know where the locker room is. I mean, was his gear stolen? Why would he have it around two? Well, at times can be a little mean. Demon, the latest bull to do his job, and he didn't have to get all that angry. He was able to get Dakota Butter off in five seconds. You know, Dakota really keeps putting out the effort and really trying this bull. And you know, as they try to jerk you forward, it's going to make your feet want to come back up behind you. And you know, that's where turning your toes out is going to make your spurs where they can buy you a second chance. You can see how his feet keep swinging back behind him. He's having trouble keeping them down. You can see this right foot here in a minute. It's going to swing so far back that it's all the way up on top of this bull's back. Now, when you get in that position, there's no way that you can. That's from getting your body jerked forward. That's when your feet are going to go back to there. Three riders left to go in round number two, and we're still waiting to see if anyone will join Alex Marsilio and Ramon De Lima in round number three. Next up, another Brazilian. Silvano Alves, the three-time PBR world champion, rode this shoot bosses, re-ride in round number one. That was for 82 and three quarters. He now faces up Mac against Sky Harbor. And this is a bull that's provided some highlights early on in this season. We've got to see him a couple of times. Had some huge jumps out of the shoot. We've seen him jerk Cody Nance down and whack heads. And you know, this bull, he fits with this pin. I mean, he. I don't know exactly what he's going to do just yet. We've seen him one time just one huge jump. The other time we've seen him start to turn back. Nobody really knows just yet, but he's going to do it really hard, whatever it is. You know, when we talk about great bulls, you know, they got to have athleticism. They got to have strength. The quickness helps. Direction changes. How high they jump, how sharp they break over, how high their kick is. But I think the thing that, that, that makes these bulls so great is how bad they want the guy off their back. And it's almost like they get psychotic about it, uh, where they just freak out. And that's what takes them to that to that higher level than, than just a really good athletic bull, is when you see them where they just have such a disdain uh, when that chute gate's open. That's when it puts in that extra hump. J-Dub is our stock contractor on retainer you know all too well why a bull like sky harbor could show some characteristics let's say that would make him a good bull but the interesting fact if he if you hear harbor in there his daddy will be bucking just a little bit later <laughs> pearl harbor so uh, it's an interesting fact uh, it's good to see that the lineage is there it's going to be an interesting matchup right here, guys. This bull really leaps and cracks his back feet over the top of his head. Sometimes he spins right here to the left, but if he goes straight, I almost think he's more treacherous to get by. Could be some head-to-head -head competition. Silvano Alves is on the clock. We're on the clock, but we're not going to need to get up. He's in his hand. Wow. Sky Harbor. 
didn't need long to get the three-time PBR world champ not only out of position, but on the ground. You know, that's what I'm talking about. You'll see these bulls that really want to get off of his back. It's like that shoot ain't opening fast enough, so he comes out backwards. You know, it's like any way I can get out of here, and it's just when you see him want them guys off so bad like that, and then being that athletic on top of it, you saw as Silvano comes down, he just kicked exactly straight up. We have two riders left to go against two of the best bulls in the business. Will any of them join these two men in the next round? 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild, and by U.S. Border Patrol. not put off getting your tickets to the 25th PBR World Finals, Unleash the Beast in Las Vegas. You'll join past world champions and fans from around the world at T-Mobile Arena in November. It's a week of the world's best bull riding concerts, fan events, and much more. You can call PBR Customer Service or visit AXS.com today. Speaking of the World Finals, well, at last year's World Finals, we saw our final two bulls, Sweet Pro's Bruiser, and Pearl Harbor fight to the final out to decide who would be the 2017 world champion bucking bull. Sweet Pro's Bruiser able to win it for the second consecutive season. But this year, Justin McBride, Pearl Harbor has been just a tick better. Do you think today is the day that Bruiser steps up his game? Well, it could be because keep this in mind. Emilio Resende was the guy that got on Bruiser for his first out at the World Finals last season, and he put up huge numbers against Emilio. Bucked him off in about two seconds and put up a gigantic number. So this could be, and Bruiser's been really good so far this season, but he hasn't had that wow moment. Well, Ty, that brings up another subjective nature of this sport. Do you think the judges sometimes see a ride differently depending on which rider is on the back of a bull. No question. You know, when you see a guy like a like a Jim Sharp type of style that can set up there and just make it look so easy, it even to an experienced eye, sometimes it can take away from a bull. When you see a bull, a guy gets leaned back and sitting on his butt and gets slung it, you know, out the back upside down, it just adds in that, that wow factor. This is one of the most athletic bulls that I've ever seen, and he can do moves that are amazing, but also a good rider taps off and gets in time with him. I think this is the most rider-friendly bull. Well, if you're DNH Cattle Company and Buck Cattle Company, you couldn't have asked any more out of Emilio Hasende to give the judges a good look at their bull. That one goes to 5.39, and surprise, surprise, Mac, it's Bruiser's best score of the season. 46-point bull score, that's great stuff, but give Emilio credit. He helped that bull get to that because he tried his guts out, and he really snapped him big when he reversed it. That was good effort by both bull and rider. Well, we're down to our final pairing. Cody Teal against Pearl Harbor. His bruiser gets to go have the rest of the day off. The top bull score we've seen so far here at Iron Cowboy. It's pretty simple for Cody Teal. He needs eight seconds on Pearl Harbor to join Alex Marsilio and Ramon DeLima. If he bucks off, Ty, we know there is going to be a Brazilian winner for the ninth what it time come down to out here. of 14 so majors. Just a moment ago to the two -top yeah, and it's, you know, know, it's like not just coincidence. These guys, they push the bar and bull riding. They, they understand the, the opportunity that's 
in front of them here in the United States riding it in the PBR and, and they're over here uh, for one reason and one reason only and that's to become the world's best bull rider. I like the way they're, they're up in the bar. This is a guy that we see a ton of talent from Cody Teal and, and you know he's got to be happy to be in this position. This is what you dream of when you're a little kid playing bull rider in the backyard. After handling that first crazy couple seconds, actually looked like he had settled in, Mac, and then somehow it ends at six. Dill was going for it, man. Bruiser had a great day, so did Pearl Harbor, but Cody Till, he was going for it. He's behind around the corner, and he just starts throwing Hail Marys, and he gets there, and you think, man, he might have a shot right here. Big, long guy, though, and it's finally too much for him. Yeah, you know, throwing those Hail Marys, it compounds on you, and that's where you see it put so much pressure on his hand that it finally ripped his hand out of the rope. 46 points for Pearl Harbor. So the duel will continue, and the bragging rights will have to wait between Pearl Harbor and Sweet Pro's Bruiser. Meanwhile, Alex Marsilio, Ramon De Lima, they move on to round three. Each has a chance to be the Iron Cowboy. from Felisco, he said that Ramon and Alex tied for the uh, Velocity Finals last year, and the tie was won by uh, uh, Alex, the right? The championship was won by Alex. And a tiebreaker. Yes. Tiebreaker.
Las Vegas this May, the top athletes in bull riding and rodeo meet for one spectacular weekend of competition, May 4th through the 6th at the Thomas and Mack Center. It's the professional bull riders' last cowboy standing, plus the all-new WCRA Rodeo Showdown. A total of more than half a million dollars in prize money is up for grabs. Visit PBR.com for ticket information. Two riders left in this edition of Iron Cowboy and a lot on the line. Ramon De Lima with a chance to be the first multiple winner of 2018 as well as Justin McBride switch those world standings. If he wins Iron Cowboy, he's our new world number one. Well, and that's what we talk about these majors, just how big they can be. Ramon De Lima would not have been the pick at the beginning of the season to think at this point in the year, this is the guy we're going to be talking about as possibly the new world number one. We start off with Ramon De Lima against Medicine Man. And J Dub is a stock contractor. You have had a busy day. This one also from your group in TNT Bucking Bulls. Yeah, we're excited about this bull. Uh, he's just a four-year-old. He's our one of our classic bulls that we compete with. But, uh, good enough to come using the championship type rounds here. He should be right here in the gate to the right. Good timing. Everything a guy wants to go uh, get the get the money on him. This bull has had five career outs, has only allowed one qualified ride. That was Silvano Alves back at last year's World Finals. And it was a whopper, 88 and three quarters. And the way Ramon De Lima is riding Ty, you feel like he could conquer anything. Yeah, this bull, you know, here's the key. I think it's still going to be hard for him to set down and pry up on that rope. I think we're going to need to see him really getting forward because this bull is going to be right there away from his hand. We've talked about what's at stake for Ramon De Lima, Alex Marsilio. What's at stake for him is his first ever career win at this level would be a PBR major if he ends up winning on the Cowboy. Oh, wow. Medicine Man was just a harsh dose of reality for Ramon. 1.6 seconds. One of the things we have talked about is now, before you guys critique this out, I'll remind everyone, if both riders buck off, they would both move on to round number four. Big time belly roll that bull through. And then look at the athleticism. I'm telling you, they just get better. They're bred better. They're fed better. They're exercised more. They're, these bulls are, are just taken such good care of. And it makes you wonder where the bull quality is going to plateau off because we just keep seeing them get better and better. Well, it's that simple format, Justin McBride. If Alex Marsilio makes eight seconds aboard Carrot Top, he's the 2018 Iron Cowboy. And I think the odds are great of him making the eight seconds right here. I think Alex finishes it right here. This is a really good matchup for him. We've seen him get the job done on bulls that go either direction in this competition. This one should be into his hand, I think. Could be around the end of the gate tied to the left, but Alex has looked strong either, either way. I think this bull is going to come around to the left, and, and you know, this, this guy is in the perfect position. He's riding good. He has the confidence right now. He's feeding off of this crowd and the energy that's in this building. This is the biggest moment of his life right here. He's looking at this puts him into the top for the world championship race if he makes this ride. Little known fact, Alex Marsilio and Ramon Galino just popped off tied for last year's real-time velocity overall championship. The tiebreaker was won by Ramon Excuse me, by Alex Marsilio over Ramon De Lima. So Marsilio with a, another chance at bragging rights and it came down to the two of them here. But we're going around four. Carrot Top was not as fast as Medicine Man, but both Brazilians taste defeat in round number three. So we move on to another chance for both of them. Two really equal bulls there. Both of them just open the gate and do the right. Try it again, boys. We're going to hit the reset button. Ramon De Lima and Alex Marsilio will be back.
for another chance. This has gotten good. Yes, that's right. 
No matter the stop on tour, the Ford F-150 is the official truck of the PBR. Here it is in its all its splendor inside AT&T Stadium. We have made it to round number four at this year's edition of Iron Cowboy. No matter where we are on tour, the Ford F-150 is the official truck of the PBR, and here it is in all its splendor inside the magnificent AT&T Stadium. We have made it to round number four. Either Ramon De Lima or Alex Marsilio is going to win this event. Will it be in this round, or will we go to the maximum round total of round number five? But Mac, in this round, at least on paper, there is clearly a bull you want and a bull you don't want. Yeah, I think Ramon definitely got the better of the two bulls to get that needed qualified ride on. Wild Goose, seen Stetson Lawrence just a few weeks back get a big score on this bull to the left really good a little bit of forward movement but a good bull Ramon De Lima as I mentioned a few moments ago trying to be the first multiple winner of 2018 as well as possibly become our new world number one he's eight seconds away from that possibility but now he's only there's the nine For the third time at Iron Cowboy, Ramon De Lima has done his job, and now he watches his friend. If Alex Marsilio bucks off, Ramon De Lima is our new world number one. You know, this has to feel so good to be able to ride one that perfectly when, when the chips are down like this in front of this many people. You know, this is probably got to be close to the biggest stage he's ever been on that's going to be the most impactful possibly win of his entire career and he looked flawless he won in sacramento a month ago where in the championship round there he rode more big bucks for 89 and a quarter and now if you're alex marsilio a member of his family or one of his friends you need to see him do what only one man has ever been able to do, and that is ride Gangster's Wild Side. And it was the last time, though, Mac, that this bull was out. Jess Lockwood rode him in Oklahoma City. Yeah, and Jess is the only guy that we've seen ride this bull. We've seen him take it to Chase Outlaw, Cooper Davis. This is a bull that actually bumped Cooper Davis off when he won his world championship. This was the last bull he got on a handful. With Lockwood, he was both directions. I th you don't know about this bull. If you commit too far one way, he will switch it up, go back the other way. Really electric bull right here. Ty, before I go to your comments, I just want to remind everybody that aside from that ride from Jess Lockwood, this bull had bucked off 21 other riders. Yeah, but you can't get beat before the boxing match, you know, and you've seen that since the beginning of time when an athlete gives up off of something's record. You know, you've got to believe in yourself. That's the very first thing that has to happen when you're a bull rider. You've got to think that you can do it before it's ever going to have a chance of happening. And if you just let every bull rest on his laurels, none of these beasts would ever get ridden. If he makes eight seconds, we go to round number five. It's a buck off, which means Ramon DeLima is the 2018 Iron Cowboy. The first major of his career and the second career win for this 27-year-old. A great job for Ramon. This has got to be a great feeling. And here's the thing, when you win this event, you outrode everybody else. That's exactly what Ramon did. Congratulations. Not only have Brazilians now won nine of the 13 majors that have been held, but they have won four out of the last five Iron Cowboys. Ramon's got to get up because he's got to do a winner interview. Enough celebration. Let's send it down to Leah. That is quite a celebration. What's the initiation for that tackle? Ela falou assim que sempre foi a celebração. Qual foi a iniciativa dessa celebração agressiva? É para batizar. 
aqui todo mundo é companheiro e eu fico feliz. A gente sente uma energia muito boa ajudando a gente. Isso aí que eles fez é por causa que eu sou um cara valente, guerreiro. It's really good. We're really good friends. What they did is just because I'm a great guy and a great warrior and uh, I just rode to show I can be a contendent for the world champion. How big is this win for you emotionally, mentally and for your career? Qual a grandeza desse desse campeonato, desse campeão hoje aqui para você como para sua carreira mentalmente? Para mim é um dos mais importantes. Sempre tive vontade de montar nessa arena. Ano passado eu vim, mas não montei, fiquei só assistindo, eu fiquei imaginando, uma hora eu vou vir montar aqui, vou sair campeão. It's really big. Last year I came and just watched and I just thought one year I'll be coming in and ride here and I'll walk out of here as a champion. Congratulations. Thank you. In round number four, it was an 86-point ride aboard Wild Goose that allows Ramon de Lima to put his name in the history books. The first major win of his career, but you heard, he's a great guy and a great warrior. Those often lead to being great world champions. We'll be back to wrap it up. PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. B&W Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. And by Wrangler, long live Cowboys. After his win in Sacramento earlier this year, Ramon DeLima stressed humility and opportunity. Well, he certainly made the most of his opportunity at Iron Cowboy, the Kubota ride of the day. Mac, let's give you the clinching ride. Yeah, and you talk about the opportunity, Craig. It doesn't get any better. He got on a really good bull to clinch this thing on. Wild Goose made the most of it. That's big time stuff. Speaking of big time, with his two wins, Sacramento and here at Iron Cowboy, he has earned a whopping 1,675 points on the season, and he becomes our new world number one. Denner Barbosa now slots into second, Claudio Montagna Jr. in third, and Luciano De Castro is in fourth. Coming up next, it's NCAA College Basketball. Number two, Michigan State takes on Wisconsin. Join us for the professional bull riders bad boy mowdown from Little Rock next Sunday at 8 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. And don't forget, our next show here on CBS is March 24th. The AK Chin Invitational 1515 Bucking Battle from Glendale, Arizona. For Ty Murray, Justin McBride, JW Hart, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.